Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. For today's second video, day 10 will take us to the 2nd of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extend GFS and ECM on Solos, maybe around a couple of weeks. And we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. So that gets us well into the second half of March, of course. I'll get on back for you in a moment. Just say that first video we say was our 6 a.m. upload. So have a look at that see what's uh, going on. We've got another named storm coming up uh, tonight and tomorrow. Storm Franklin being named by the UK Met. So, um, but yeah, a lot of weather still to come over the next uh, few days. Check out the 6am upload if you would like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe on the videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Right, okay, let's start off with stratospheric development. Then. So, this is how temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA over the uh, North Pole. So, we've got those blue colours there in over top of the Arctic and over top of the North Pole uh, as well. These are the cold temperatures at 10 HP. That's driving uh, the polar vortex. So if we run through, we don't see if we get a warming of the stratosphere. We do get warming coming up in the next few days. Starts off in the North Atlantic and pushes through to uh, Europe. Quite, quite a significant warming of the stratosphere there. Um, and that moves into uh, Russia and uh, sort of intensifies a little bit over Siberia as well. Uh, but we keep those blue colors. Those are cold temperatures at 10 HP. We keep those going over the Arctic and over the pole as well. Now, as we run through into more extended range, we see those uh, warmer colours be begin to push into the pole itself um, and in towards Greenland as well. So temperatures lifting up quite significantly as we go through the first week of uh, March, displacing those blue colours out of the pole and towards like Northern Europe. So that's the polar vortex at its roots in the strategy being displaced from the Arctic and the pole down towards Russia and uh, into Europe as well. This should have a weakening effect on the polar vortex. I'm not sure the temperatures are reaching like a sudden stratospheric warming uh, level, but they should have a weakening of the polar vortex. So we should see zonal winds beginning to uh, weaken as we go into uh, March. Uh, we uh, can see on this one, weather is cool.com, lots of different lines here, but we can see some of the green lines, which have a GFS ensemble. So in the next week or so, we're going to have record breaking strong uh, zonal winds once again. We have that like at the beginning of February, we get to the end of February. And again, we're seeing record breaking strong zonal winds at 10 HBA over the Arctic and the North Pole. But right at the very end, that is just an indication, I think, that uh, the zonal winds may be starting to drop out through the first week of March. So from a record-breaking strong zonal wind potentially at the end of February to uh, a deceleration, anyway, of zonal winds, a weakening of zonal winds through the first week of March. Still above average, though, uh, the black line is like the trend line, the average line uh, in terms of zonal winds. should be weakening at this time of the year. So even that dropout in zonal winds through the first week of uh March at the GFS Summers of Forecasting still keeps the solar wind stronger uh, significantly stronger than average. Any effect of this uh, displacement of the polar vortex and its roots in the stratosphere, um, you know, any effect of that will be further on into March, possibly even into April as those solar winds begin to decelerate. If we put the CFS uh, forecast in, we can see that the CFS is predicting that solar winds will uh, weaken back to average by the end of um, March and into the beginning of April. Of course, that's a long way off, but it would be in line, you know, with the weakening of the Winds, but that will happen cyclically at this time of year anyway. Um, and you know, uh, uh, and this displacement event uh, as well. So, I think we're probably going to see the zonal winds and polar vortex beginning to wind down as we go through into March. You would, you would expect that anyway as we're moving into spring, but definite signs that this polar vortex, almost polar vortex, polar vortex of June, is coming to an end. Uh, right, so temperature is standing at 7.1, that is 3.4 degrees above average. We explained yesterday's video that we're right up there with the very, very mildest, very warmest February's on record. We're over 3 degrees above average, whether this comes out as the warmest on record or whether it's up there, you know, with the warmest but not quite will be warmest, uh, remains to be seen. It is certainly going to be exceptionally mild uh, February, that's no getting away 
uh, from that. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks on Birmingham today. So red light is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. You see we're starting off warmer than average at the moment. But you're going to go cooler uh, tomorrow. And very zonal really. Very up and down with those uh, temperatures. So warmer, cooler, uh, warmer and cooler. Uh, cooler there. Actually quite cold for a while at the end of next week. And then as we go into the closing days of March and the beginning of February. Uh, the closing days of February, beginning of March. Um, we start to go quite a bit milder there. Precipitation-wise, just regular precipitation spikes coming through. So there's going to be quite a bit of rain uh, over the next couple of uh, weeks. Maybe particularly as we get into the first week of March. Although yesterday's video was suggesting there might be some higher pressure building into the first week of March. It looks pretty unsettled, really, on that ensemble, doesn't it? Uh, temperature anomaly is on the 20th of February to the 28th. They're coming out a little bit above average, not excessively so. Precipitation anomaly from the 20th to 28th of February. Generally wet and average in central and northern areas, a little bit drier though down in the south. The latest info map from EarthNullSchool.net shows that we're bringing in west to southwesterly today, and uh, we remain unsettled. There's quite a bit of rain to come, particularly for England and Wales, as the weather front will become quite stationary and slow moving. And up here, of course, we've got the low pressure that is going to be storm franklin that will be with us uh particularly in northern and northwestern areas tonight giving potentially wind gusts up to 80 miles an hour Right, this is how the UK Met Euro. Let's have a look at some chart data. And this is how the UK Met Euro is looking midnight on Wednesday. Unsettled, low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic, looking rather wet and windy. Keep it wet and windy into Thursday. Uh, you know, on into next weekend, low pressure continuing to come barreling in from off the Atlantic. So the weather remains in a very unsettled mode. Icon is looking like that. Again, low pressure just dries in from off the Atlantic, wet and windy. Winds turning into the north to north west there as well so becoming uh, colder with those northwesterly winds perhaps bring some winter showers to northern and northwestern areas a little ridge of high pressure builds up from the southwest on saturday for that high pressure we begin to slip just a little bit further eastwards as we get through into next weekend so a little bit more settled from icon compared to uk met for next weekend that'll probably be quite spring-like actually could be some chilly nights of course but by day probably quite pleasant uh, with some uh, very mild sunny spells. This is how the GFS Midnight Run is looking. Again, low pressure brings further wet and windy weather in off the Atlantic as we go through the rest of this week. Into the weekend, some higher pressure will try to build to our south and southeast. It struggles a little bit, but by day 10, have got high pressure building over and to the east of the country, blocking off the low pressure in the Atlantic. It doesn't really come to much show. Um, and, you know, just keep low pressure coming. Although the south is always an influence from higher pressure. So the GFS does want to have that higher pressure influence to the south but to the north and west it is still quite unsettled the 6z again looks rather wet and windy uh through the rest of this week with further spells of rain then high pressure builds in for, to the south uh, and southwest on Saturday. Um, that high pressure is struggling though to, to get going properly. So for northern and western areas up to day 10, quite unsettled with further rain. But for England and Wales, under the high pressure, there should be a reasonable amount of dry weather. Back to more unsettled weather and rather colder conditions too into early March as this low pressure comes diving in uh, from the north. That sends a jet stream southwards as well. So maybe a little bit of winchiness around through early March on the 6th Z. Um, and then back into the Atlantic driven weather. So much less in the way of high pressure through the first week of March uh, with the 6th Z compared to midnight run. That gets us up to the 8th of March. GEM looks like this. Again, low pressure brings rather wet and windy weather across the country as we go through the weekend, uh, through this week and into the weekend too. Um, on up to day 10, just rather than sell high pressure, trying to ridge into south, southwest, but not really able to get much of an ascendancy and then the ECM uh, once more is looking unsettled with further spells of rain to the northwest always trying to get a little bit of bridging game to the south and southeast but struggling to get that high pressure through um to the, the most unsettled weather continues to be out to the north and to the northwest this is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometcho.com. So a lot of rain to come over the next few hours, uh, particularly so for England and Wales. Winds will be really strong in the north as well. Colder tomorrow with wintry showers in the north as winds turn into the north to northwest. And then further sort of uh, low pressure coming and going through next week will bring spells of rain. And there will be some winchiness in the north uh, at times as well. Uh, perhaps trying to get a little bit more towards higher pressure for England and Wales by day 10, which is the 2nd of March.
These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 2nd of March, 16. Members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to the west and high pressure to the east. Should be a lot of dry weather coming through uh, with that for more southern and east now. So it will be quite mild as well as winds are pushing up from the south. 15, including the operational run, have high pressure building to our south and southeast. Lower pressures away to the northwest. That should bring quite a bit of dry weather with it as well. 14, with low pressure in off the Atlantic, looking rather flat. Westerly and most are settled in the north, and then six having high pressure building up from the south uh, and from the southeast. That's probably the most settled option. In two weeks' time, we look quite unsettled though. This gets us to the 7th of March. 20 members of the ECM ensembles with deep low pressure over the country. 17 again with low pressure in off the Atlantic, and 14 continuing with low pressure in off the Atlantic. So they're all looking pretty Atlantic driven and uh, unsettled through the first week of March. Not much sign of high pressure taking over uh, there. Uh, right, finally, we'll have a look at CFS uh, B2. In fact, I'm just going to pause the video because I've not got weeklies up. So let's just pause the video very quickly and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, we've got our weeklies up from CFS. So this is uh, this is the week one, 500 millibar high. So I'm taking this from the 20th, 26th of February. The coming week is low pressure dominated. Uh, so unsettled with westerly winds. Uh, week two, much more towards high pressure. This is 27th of February to the 5th of March. Higher pressure building up from the south and pushing north. Lower pressure out to the west. So quite a bit of dry weather then in week two. Week three will be the 6th to the 12th of March. Again, with high pressure building from the south and reaching north. Low pressure weight to the northwest should be quite a bit dry and spring-like weather with that. And week four carries it on. It's the 13th to the 19th of March. Plenty of high pressure bringing spring-like weather to much of northern and western Europe. Low pressures out to the northwest could keep Scotland more unsettled, but basically high pressures in control. So a spring-like March to come, probably very mild, dry, and uh, plenty of uh, spring sunshine to enjoy uh, for March, if that is correct. Let's just have a look at CFSV2 before we go. These are uh, 700 millibar high dominance breaking down to monthly pairs. So this is CFSV2 700 millibar high dominance for March, showing high pressure in control. Going to be a dry, warm, and fine March, if that's correct. The high pressure continues into April as well. Month number two, because there was quite a bit of high pressure to much of northern and western Europe. Month number three is May. Um, a little bit weaker with the high pressure, but still plenty of reaching going on. I think that would, again, deliver a fair amount of dry weather uh, for, for May. So quite a spring-like spring, if you like. Quite a bit of dry, warm weather to enjoy in spring. June, month number four now, a long way out, of course. Takes high pressure a bit further north. There could be a trough setting up uh, through here. So that might start to turn a little bit more unsettled. Maybe a bit thundery as well. We could start to bring up some more of a southerly type influence. So maybe wedge and thundery. In June, July, month number five now, really long way out, bit of mystery, high pressure towards Scandinavia and out in the Atlantic. This white area could be filling up with uh, lower pressure, maybe. And then month number six is August, and that has high pressure over Scandinavia and out towards Newfoundland. It's probably low pressure through here. That could be drawing up like southerly winds. Uh, so probably quite a warm summer being indicated here, but maybe a bit volatile, maybe a bit unsettled and thundery. Of course, it's all a very long way out and uh, is really, really speculative. Right, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please can you smash your like button. Make sure you're subbed to our channel. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. For guys who have it, drop a comment. Let us know what you this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz this as well. It's amazing and it's incredible. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. Right, so we're done with today's videos. We'll be back tomorrow with 6 a.m. upload and the 10 to 14 day as well. So keep checking back to the channel for more. You enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, for this one, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.